Hey there boys and girls, it's the Reverend. We're here for uh, Sound Pro Live and Live to Play with uh, Larry Hall, who is a fun guy, the owner of HAS Productions here in uh, Las Vegas and a musician and sound company owner. And what else? Musician, sound company owner. Oh, hypocrite. 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 That's right. I forgot my line. <laughs> uh, we've got the... Uh, Latest in ears from JH Audio, um, which Larry's been turn the case over, dude. It's upside down. <laughs> and uh, Larry, why don't you tell us about your experience using these things? Okay, uh, first off, which you'll probably read in the article if any of you can actually read. Um, as a sound company owner, as I discussed with the Rev in the past, um, I force a lot of my clients onto using in ears. Um, as a musician and a very loud musician, I play in a lot of rock bands. I have no desire at all. To use in ears, I want loud wedges in my face. Until I got these. The, here's the here's the cool part. Uh, most in ear systems do not give you uh, any low end that you can actually work with. Uh, if you notice, 90% uh, of the drummers out there are running the in ears and a bunch of double 18s or double 15 subs behind them. Uh, my drummer, whose name is Chad Stumbo, who plays also with uh, Lynch Mob and Earshot, we just got him a set of these. He's eliminated the sub from his rider. He's eliminated, eliminated the sub. the sub from his rider. No longer, oh, I need to, I need to earwax out. <laughs> um, we won't focus in too close on those. They, they, it, does, it does come with a with an earwax cleaner. I've never actually used it, apparently. <laughs> So we'll work on that later. Uh, the, the case all by itself is a cool thing. Um, this is made of some sort of super hard plastic that uh, Brittany tells me you can drive over with a truck and it won't break. Um, I have put it in my back pocket and I'm a fat ass and it has not broken in my back pocket, so I believe her. Um, it also comes with your name on it, so if you're, you're at the Grammys, like I am as an artist, you know, three times a year I do the Grammys as an artist, um, and there's all these JH Audio in-ears sitting on the table in the green room, you know which ones are yours. That's a cool, cool little feature there, too. Um, customer service. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the same drummer I was just speaking of, Chaz Stumbo, had his ear stolen out of his car outside a guitar center here in Las Vegas a few weeks ago. Uh, I called Brittany on a Friday night where she should have been either out partying or asleep. Either way, she answered the phone, and by Tuesday or Wednesday morning the following week, Chaz had another set. I don't know what else to tell you guys about customer service. It doesn't get any better than that. Um, back to the product itself. Uh, you can get them in any color. You can get any design on them. Um, I had her send them to me in plain Jane um, uh, because I didn't want to be a pain in her ass. But uh, you can get them in black, blue, red. You can, If you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, which you should be, you can get the Dallas Cowboy logo on it. Um, if you're completely colorblind and you want to have a red one for right and a black one for left, whatever you want, they'll take care of it. Uh, these pop out, which I don't know how to make them pop out. Uh, the cable's made of Kevlar. Well, it's not made of Kevlar, it's covered in Kevlar. Kevlar yeah. um, so uh, snapping it is, is not impossible, but it's, it's you unlikely. Work, yeah, yeah. you got to work at it. And, if, and the, the most likely thing to fail on something like this is obviously the cable, yeah. and, and it can be replaced. Yeah, and, and the, probably the, the single most negative piece of it is, um, and it, it hasn't failed me yet, but I feel like this end could be a little beefier. Um, I, I don't know if, if it could be a different name brand or maybe instead of a molded one, it could be um, a screw-on mount one so that when it does go bad, it can be field replaceable. And again, this is extremely nitpicking because I've now been using it for a couple of months, um, three or four times a week, and it's not giving me a single issue. So I don't even know if it's a valid complaint. Um, when you put these in your ear, uh, you become... I don't know if any of you guys ever watch uh, Oz or not, um, but you become, well, that's the wrong ear, isn't it? Um, no, yeah, that's definitely the wrong ear. Yeah, see the red one right there, and it actually <laughs> says RE, standing for right ear. Um, oh, no, they say LH. Oh, that's my name! That's cool. I still think the red one goes here. Once you get these things in your ear, you become a man and uh, his thoughts. As long as it's not plugged into anything, it's like being the naked guy in the HBO show Oz when he gets thrown into solitary. Just a man alone with his thoughts. That's all you can hear. Um, you can't carry on a conversation with anybody um, unless you're really listening intently, leaning into them, and reading their lips. I play in a hard rock band with lots of loud third power amps on stage, lots of uh, SVTs on stage, um, and it's actually comfortable on stage with these on. Um, in my ears and turned off. Uh, 
the other night at rehearsal, we were getting decibel ratings of 110 through Smart Live at just stage level. And it was very comfortable with this. I'm running my in-ear level on about two. That's how clean, clear, and uh, uh, isolated everything is in here. So did you have, did, now, as somebody who hadn't used ears a lot before, did you have any problem with the isolation factor and not being, you know, some people, it's good, they call it the boy in the bubble syndrome, you know? You, you know, I thought it was going to bother me, but it didn't bother me. Um, it was actually kind of cool because uh, um, when guys in a band were trying to communicate with me, um, I had an excuse why I didn't. <laughs> Why I couldn't communicate back with them, so it was awesome. <laughs> um, so I had that going for me. Um, we've implemented a, a, a microphone on stage, which we stole from a country artist a few years ago that I saw, where we just have a microphone set up so that uh, those of us that are audience ears can grab the microphone and talk to the engineer um, privately and quietly without anybody else knowing about any, any complaints or issues. Um, uh, 15 or 18 hours worth of rehearsals in one week um, with the in ears. Um, I'm not going to say I didn't have any ear fatigue, that would be crazy, but I didn't have the I hear bells syndrome going on. Um, uh, I didn't recognize any dips in my hearing that I would normally recognize um, when I'm using wedges. Uh, so um, crystal clear, um, because of the tight seal that the uh, ears provide, no, nothing getting in, so I don't have any snare drums or any Marshall cabinets or any SVTs beat my eardrums to death. Um, uh, which brings me to my last point. I don't know how loud these things can go before they distort. Um, I have no clue because with a Sennheiser IEM 300 um, and the console at Unity, I've got the knob on the Sennheiser at about 2, so 7 o'clock. So click on 1, 2, and it's loud enough for me with all the stage volume that my bands run. So. Um, my estimation is if I cranked it all the way to 11, <laughs> that uh, they, would, they would handle it. So Okay, and uh, over and out. Thanks. All righty.